I started like on the basis of Ian Banks uh, and my agent taking me out one night to some gentleman's drinking club or other, getting me drunk and saying, Mike, you don't have enough fun, it's time you started to have fun here, sign on this dotted line and write a space opera, sort of thing. And I went home and I thought, how hurtful of them to say that I never have any fun because I do have fun. But from now on I will have even more. <laughs> and so I kind of the blog was part of that. It was just sort of, you know, let's just do some writing for the sake of it. I hate that sensation of living in a fantasy world. I really hate it. I hate it for two reasons. One is it's a fantasy world. It's not the world. The other reason is it's an incredible amount of effort to support. It's the most exhaustive kind of writing there is. Um, but at the end of the day, you're wrung out because you have spent 12 hours trying to be in a space that doesn't exist. And that's very, very tiring. Um, I much prefer to write about real things. Probably because you don't have to make anything up. You can, you can go out and take your notebook with you, and write down real things that you have seen and heard, and bingo, next day you can put them into fiction. Uh, you can overhear people's conversations and put them into fiction. You, I don't, I wouldn't have to work to describe this balcony or this space. I might spend a morning doing it, but it wouldn't be work in the sense of having to invent something like that. So the blog was kind of a, um, a counteractive to living in your own head. Um, and you've described it as opening the notebooks. I mean, to a degree it was that, and there, there is. Uh, every so often I release, <laughs> release a note into the wild from about 1980 or, you know, 1974, just to see what people will make of it. It's, it's less than 4,000 words long, that story. It's 3.8, three, three something like that. Um, there's almost more crammed into it than there is into the entire light trilogy and therefore it's impossible to unpick and it was deliberately designed to be impossible to unpick. The, the, the fewer the words you use the more stuff you can stuff in which is why poetry is so good and which, why, which is why poetry requires such an effort to unpack. Uh, but yes it's about migration, it's about the exploitation of migration, obviously, by, uh, by the developed world. Uh, I liked the idea of the discovery of a, a previously unknown continent uh, positioned somewhere in the North Sea, and indeed based on that country that used to exist in the North Sea, um, although it's got elements of um, the old East European states and it's got elements of, of Spanish culture in it as well. Uh, indeed a, a parody of Picasso I think is, um, is carefully leaved in there. The idea was to write a horror story about the exploitation of immigrants but at the same time as again you have this problem which I've talked about earlier of having to produce a sense of alienness. I don't think you're doing your job as this kind of writer unless you can take the reader into a, a space or a zone which is odd. And it is quite difficult, especially, especially in the context of generic science fiction or fantasy or horror, to do anything new, to really drag a reader to a place that seems odd. And so my other point was to make make that culture as alien as possible whilst not using anything that was particularly alien. And so you work there with juxtaposition. So I took some notes from Spain and I took some notes from Latvia and I rammed them together and, and, and collided them to see what would spin off. Um, and then worked with the spin-off, basically, uh, to create this 
sense of a weird, of a weird place. Now, it is only a sense. It's totally minimally achieved because you've got less than 4,000 words to operate in. You are absolutely not building a world when you do this. What you are doing is, is I hope, using deft, minimalistic little touches to encourage the reader to build the world. Um, which again is, to me, the whole point of this kind of fiction. Um, people talk about the interactivity of new media. Uh, the implication being that, that written fiction was never very interactive. Nonsense. If you read, a, if you read anything of mine, you do some of the work. In fact, you do quite a lot of the work, whether you know it or not. Um, my beef about world building is not about world building in itself. It's about this idea that you do world building by literally building the world. <laughs> um, which you don't. Ask any, ask any realist painter if they actually paint what's there. Um, it's a nonsense. So there's a lot of minimal sketching goes on in, in, uh, in that story to create a real sense of something which is part of a world we might understand but which is just slightly different enough for us to feel massive sympathy actually on the part of its denizens who don't seem to be somehow as complete as we do and, and honestly isn't that how we think of the immigrants that we, we exploit in our culture though some men quite the same as us quite the same thing as us um, so I wanted to produce a kind of fake estrangement a kind of fake uh, sense of the exotic um, which would then be in that last awful scene tipped over into, into this recognition that, that, that in a sense they're at our mercy um, which is what I wanted to leave you with a real sense that somehow exotic and strange that they are there totally at our mercy Thank mm -hmm. you.